Hey everyone, Mark from Coast of Country, and today's video we're going to play around with a little guardy boat. Um, I've taken out the centre console that I made previously, it's just way too big for this boat and there's not enough room. I've taken the tiller control that you probably saw in the previous video when we were guardy fishing, put it back on um, this little old motor as a tiller, um, rewired all the stop switch and everything, so it's all ready to go, that's all working. And now what I need to do is work out some sort of um, storage system and a chair so I can actually fish out of this and move it around when I'm driving. So I want to keep this as light as possible and as simple as possible. So um, we'll see how we get on. Okay, with a heap of thought, as in at least 10 seconds worth, we went to Kmart and got this director's chair, which I think will be handy for um, to be able to put it here for driving. And then I can set it up backwards for fishing. So we're basically making a um, redneck game fishing chair for mini marlin or guardies as we like to call them. So um, yeah, like Kmart special. I don't always go to Kmart for everything. Sometimes I go to Target. Anyway, so that will sit there. I'm going to tie this in here when we're travelling. It's a bit, a bit high and I know it's a bit cumbersome, but anyway. They can go there, and then when I want to go fishing, I'm going to lift this up. They can go that way, like that. And this pocket in the side, which has actually got that cooler in it, I reckon I'm going to put all my tackle and stuff in there, and it'll keep it off the floor. Because this floor gets soaking wet, it's such a low boat, um, water does get in there. So that can be for tackle. That can go like that. There is enough room underneath as well for the SP when we're travelling as well, so cool. But what we're going to do is, we can't just leave it like that obviously, so we're going to have to put rudder holders in here. And um, to do that, this is made out of really pathetic wet plywood, it's only like two mil thick. Um, so I'm going to put a rod holder in here and I'll move that cup holder back to there with a bit of checker plate. Okay, so that's the basic setup. That's um, This is pretty ordinary, this plywood here. So this cup holder, um, we'll take that out because I want the rod holder more up the front here. Well, this is pretty high quality stuff. So there you go, we'll mount that somewhere else here, back here, further out of the road. Probably never use it. Anyway, that's where we're gonna put our rod holder. So we've got these angled rod holders. So obviously we'll drill a new hole for it. So it's gonna probably go somewhere like that. Grab your guardy whiting rod, whatever you wanna call it. Um, yeah, so these might have to come a lot further forward, I think. Somewhere around there. Probably mounted in here somewhere, actually. Might drill a test hole first. And I might even put one of these straight tubes in as well. So we can have a storage rod like that. As a spare, maybe back there out of the road. And then we'll have to pile this in so we don't get ripped out of the boat with these massive fish. Alright, so just working out exactly where we're going to put this thing. I reckon straight off that corner, up nice and close to the edge, um, is probably going to be the best spot. We'll have the rod sitting out like that. And then for the upright storage, I was thinking with my arms going to be in the road there, I reckon the best place for this rod is going to be straight up and down in this corner. But I also need to make sure I don't have it down so it stabs into the tube. And then we'll put the um, drink holder in the middle there somewhere. Surprisingly, um, pretty crazy. What about a bit of room? Should throw a rod out here, probably catch just as much. Right, so we're going to do use this um, bit of ply as a template. We're going to pull this out, stick a bit of checker plate in there instead. Um, when you're drilling out these holes, um, you need to select a hole saw quite a bit bigger than the actual hole that this goes into because these are set at an angle. So if you make that a really nice tight hole there, when you drop that in, you won't be able to tip it back and get the angle you need. So you need to go oversize when you're drilling. In this case, I've just chosen a, um, well it's actually a new one, 60 mil or in bananas it's uh, two inches, three eighths, whatever that is. So anyway, 60 mil. So you whack that on here. And the problem we're gonna have is I need to make a hole out here so we're going to have no pilot hole, as in this is your centre pilot hole guide. So this is going to be a mess, but I really don't care. I'm just going to chew a bit out here. Hopefully this will drill it. Or... Oh. I'll just 
do that temporary. Try not to go through the pontoons because that would ruin my day. Right, so get that. Work that in there. So that's kind of where it's going to go. Obviously, we're going to make this centered later. So that's missing the pontoon there. That like that. And then that rod holder. Get nicely in there like that. So that's not too bad. Work that in there. So with this one here, we could actually drill a smaller hole. In fact, I might have to, yeah. Because that one is probably going to be on the outside of the mounting plate. So you'll, you'll see the gap underneath. Otherwise, so I'll have to get a smaller hole saw for this. Right, so we've got another hole saw. This one's pretty worn, but um, it's pretty perfect fit that way. Because this is just going straight up and down, it doesn't matter. If you're mounting them on an angle like this other one, you definitely need a bigger hole. So this is a, what is it? 51 mil or two inch if you're in bananas so alrighty and what I'm going to do is drill this so I want it in this area here somewhere get this out of the road first now so that's pretty much where that chair is going to end up very close anyway and then oh, this is going to come through, so obviously I can't put it, I actually prefer to put it here, but I can't, because it'll hit the pontoon, so I'm probably going to have to end up pretty much back in here somewhere, which will just me, so to make it safe I'll have to come back in here. So X marks the spot. Oh, it's thin. So without drilling through the pontoon, And we're just using this as a guide anyway at the moment. We're going to rip this plate out. So that will be... That'll be the rod holder storage. Rod storage, or I might even put a little baby landing net in there or something like that. So that's where that's going to go. And the cup holder, which is pretty ordinary, but we might as well use it. We might stick that in here somewhere like that. Okay, so the next job would be, we're going to take this um, bit of plywood out and we'll replace that, so we need to drill out those pot rivets. Try and take this um, bit of aluminium stripping out and that should hopefully come out somehow. So we'll get our drill and drill these rivets out. No, need a bigger size for that I think. Right, slightly bigger drill bit. Oof, there you go. Anyway, I think we've ordered our warranty now. Well, in fact, we may have done that when we drilled a massive hole in there anyway, but... Okay, so the rivets are out. So somehow I've got to get this strip out. I'll just bend that out a bit. Right, I'll just get a screw or something in here, see if I can... Get these out a bit. I need to save this strip. So I've got to be a little bit careful with it. Right, so there's our template, which we're now going to make a aluminium checker plate one out a bit stronger. Okay, so we have our template, and I'm going to change it with a bit of um, aluminium that we've got lying around, a bit of scrap stuff, uh, very similar thickness. In fact, it's exactly the same. If not, that's a tiny bit thinner. But by the time you have the ridges on the um, checker plate part, it's the same thickness. And what would be a silica around the edge? Stop it rattling around. Um, can we get a piece out of here? I don't know. Uh, that'll work. Yeah, hopefully. What are we doing? So that's the top. I'd like the checker plate up, I think. Yeah, that'll do. Won't make any difference really if it's up or down. Okay, so. Let's find a spot where we can make this work. Probably use that corner, it's pretty close to 90 degrees, so that's a bonus. You mark this out. Yeah, 
and we want a center point roughly there for the upright storage holder and basically just make this one so it fits on the edge there. Right, you could use a jigsaw to cut this out, but I'm just going to whiz around it quickly with a um, angle grinder. Alright, let's cut pretty much the shape out. We just drill some holes in it. Drill a hole in this, see if I can hang on to it. I'll stick a glove on for that in case it decides to wander off on me. Check the spiders. Right, so we know there's a tiny lip around this, isn't there? So we've got to make sure we don't go near that edge. Probably about that far, because there's an aluminium trimmer and goes around. And then we've got this, which does stick out a little bit. So that's the way it goes that way. So make sure that sits there. And then in theory, it's got to come back a fair way. So we do a line between there. That's that front lip, so I've got to come back a long way past there. So roughly there. So the center line's actually there somewhere. Close enough. Just a pilot hole first. Just pushing lightly because it's super thin this stuff. Uh, I'll get a block of wood. Okay, so I'll we'll just drop in there, and that gives us plenty of clearance for that lip around there. Alright, that's one down. Next one's there, that's the straight up and down storage. Okay, so now what are we doing? Drink holder. Do we want a drink holder? Probably not. But when in Rome, we're gonna that's kind of the center of it there. So we can use the existing holes that came with it. Okay, so we're going to cut that shape out. I'll see what else saws I've got. I I forgot one that big. Right, so I've moved this one over to the um, <coughs> excuse me, drill press because um, it is quite a large hole and I don't want it taken off on me when we're hanging onto it. 79mm hole or 3 inch 1 8 in bananas. And um, we're just going to drill that now on the press and um, make that hole. It doesn't have to be perfectly in the right spot. I mean, I've got it pretty close because we can put that drink hole wherever we like. It's not that critical at the moment. So. Fire this up, make sure the key's out.
There we go. So now I've just got to cut out the little drips around the edge for, I'm assuming that's where the handle of a mug goes. Alright, so there's a hole, and because I didn't have the right size hole saw, um, it's slightly too small by a tiny bit. So we'll get the die grinder and make that a little bit bigger, so it'll drop in there. I'll get the angle grinder and cut a little slot out here as well. I'll whack this in the vise, get the die grinder onto it. Um, to protect it a little bit, you can put um, just a bit of um, plywood or something, or anything in the vise as soft jaws. Not too worried about it, because it's only like a fishing thing, so... Alright, so that just stops it marking when you clamp down with the vise. And then we'll grind out a bit of this hole and make it a bit bigger. So you need to squint or put safety glasses on and you must. Right, so that'll go. Now cut this little slot out. Okay, so we've got all the holes, I'll we'll just give them a quick thumb up. Here's a deburring tool. Um, excuse my voice, I'm getting over a cold, I'm losing my voice. Um, all you do with that is just a little, basically it's a sharp, um, high, high, uh, what do you call it, high carbon steel. You can whiz around the edges, and just deburs it. So if you've got any, you know, sharp edges like that, whiz around like that a couple of times, knocks the sharp edges off. Doesn't matter when you're putting rod holders in it, but it just um, makes it a little bit tidier. Aluminium is a bit soft. Where'd the other one go? Yeah. Okay, so there we have it. So that's our drink holder one. Should go in. Like that. Little clips in the back hold it in. I reckon that'll end up being a phone holder. That's our storage one, and a rod holder, we'll go like that. So now we need to just drill holes, screw these in, and uh, go from there. You could actually reinforce this underneath, but all right, compared to what's there, if that gets ripped out, I think the rivets in the chair are going to get torn out way before that. And let's be honest, we're catching guardies and whiting, so it's not really a um, big, um, huge marlin, is it? What is she doing? Hello. What are you doing? I'm taking our breeding chicken for a walk. What the heck is that? Uh, it's a chicken halter that she's not very happy about. But she's broody, and if she's in the backyard, then she runs back to the nest. So. Mm, okay. Well, she knows how it works. That she's is the working. weirdest thing I've seen in ages. Is this borderline cruelty to animals? She doesn't care about it. She was around scratching with it before. Yeah, she doesn't seem too worried, does she? Which one's this, honey? This is honey. Hey, honey, are you broody, are you? Yeah. Yeah. She's not very happy about it. Yeah. Come on. Come on, Jackie. She's also never been out the front before, so she's no idea what's going on. Yeah. I think this is probably one of the weirdest things I've done. Okay, I'm going back to building. Okay, right, I'm going to see if this thing fits. So that should hopefully slide in here. Or not, like Persuader. Not 
actually there. Um, so, that lip there. Far out, it's actually going to work. So, this is a bit of roofing gutter silicon. Probably doesn't need this, but I'll just put a dab just in the grooves um, and then like a bit of a blob, and that'll just stop it um, vibrating around a bit if it's traveling in the boat. That's probably plenty. I'll stick a bit on the back end. Right. Square him up a bit. Get rid of that. Do not wipe it on my jeans because I'll get in trouble. Right, so I will put a little bit in the back of this as well. Just a little bead here and there. Okay, that's all it'll need. Right, so here's our back trim. Put in there. I'm going to juggle this to get that in there, and then we'll do that. I'll have to bend it a bit. We'll just have to hot rivet this back together. That's basically a pneumatic um, gun that runs off the air compressor. Um, so basically rivets. And we just got to get the right size tip for this. In this case, I think it's a um, 3 16th or something like that. Let's change this one over. This is a 332. So what we do, there's a selection here of what you can use. Um, yeah, it is that one, three, what is it, three, six, eight. So, screw that in the end. We'll pull the jaws back and then we can screw that on. Tighten him up. And we're right to go. So, how pot rivet works, basically this goes in here. And what happens, a little ram pulls the centre pin back, expands out the aluminium and locks into the sheet metal. So, when I pull the trigger, See, it expands it out that, like that. So once they're fired off, they basically end up like this. This is the head of the rivet, and they expand out into the hole you've drilled. So and that's what we do to can reconnect this. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll load up our rivet, like so. Pop it in here. Push that in as tight as we can. And fire that off. There you go. I'm not sure why that took so long, but anyway. So that's one done, and then we'll do this other side. I think I might have the regulator wrong on the air compressor. I've been doing other things with it, but we shall see. So again, load a rivet up, pop it in here, push that in nice and tight. And there we go. Well, I wonder if I get my warranty back now. It's good as new. So here's our chair, we've got the checker plate in there, we've got our um, drink holder in. That's where that rod holder is going to go like that. And this is a storage rod holder that's going to go like that. So all we're going to do is mark some holes, drill them and pot rivet those in. And we're in business. So we've got somewhere like that. So that can be there. This one here. Pretty much going to go where it goes. So, uh, well, it's always hard drilling checker plate too because your drill bit hits the top bits and wanders off. So, see how we get on. So, right on the edge of this checker plate, which makes it a bit hard. Nice, sharp drill bit help. See how to sharpen drill bits. Check out one of my previous videos with the drill doctor and the angle grinder. Oh, the bench grinder, man. I'll put a link in the description. So if you wanted to get excited, you could put silicon underneath this as well. 
which I'm not going to worry about because it's not really um, any advantage to that. Right, on, so drop our rod holders in. Grab some rivets. Hot rivet gun, and away we go. Okay, done. So there we have it. That's a bit of checker plate replacement. There's a rod holder there which can go in like that. And drink holder. There we go. And when we've got the second rod or whatever, or we're not using this one, that can sit in there like that as a storage. We'll tie the chair in with a couple of bungees or something so it doesn't move around too much. There you have it. And on this other side, what we'll do, this is actually a, what do they call it, a chiller bag or something. So what I'm gonna do with that is, um, I'm just gonna throw my um, tackle box and a few bits and pieces in there to keep them dry out of the water. And um, there you go, I'll fold that down when we're driving. So we'll have to get it out to sea and see how it goes. So there you go, that's it um, pretty much finished out on the water. So a couple of rod holders, um, got a tackle on the right there. And um, yeah, even this would make a good um, jetty or landing um, chair as well. So it'd be nice and portable, we can go sit on a landing and catch a few fish as well, so. All right, so here we are, and um, we've got quite a bit of room now. So we'll get into these guardies and see what we can get. Right, this is why I need to sell the boat, it's ridiculously scary. That's about half throttle. Okay, so that's the end result for our little session today with the new chair. So we've got 13 gars, uh, four King George Whiting, salmon all used for bait, and four leather jackets. So not too bad of a session. They're all pretty good chewing, these fish. So um, yeah, now get into it and fill it and clean them and fill them.